Okay, so I think that meal planning can be a challenge for all of us, but specifically for me when I'm also trying to like figure out what content I'm gonna share on my channel, sometimes things can get a little bit tricky with figuring out what to make for dinner, what I need to film that particular week, and what I already have in my pantry and my freezer. And so today I just wanted to walk you through that whole process. I'm going to show you my completed meal plan for this week. We're gonna go through a quick Walmart grocery haul that I got just to fill in some items. And then we're going to cook four dinners and we're gonna show you how it all comes together. So let's go. Okay, so number one, meal planner. I love this meal planner, and actually the last time I checked on the Carrie L website, it's out of stock. However, there is a similar one that you can get on Amazon, which I will happily link down below. It's a little bit larger than this one. I really do like the tear off grocery list. I don't typically go to the grocery store much anymore now. I do Walmart grocery delivery a lot because I have Walmart Plus and it saves me so much time. Um, but that is an option, obviously, if you like to go in the store and do your own shopping. So I typically just plan out dinners. However, sometimes when I'm deciding what to film or meal prep for the week, I will also think about breakfast and lunches. But dinner is kind of the primary thing that I'm mostly thinking about when I'm making dinners or when I'm meal planning. So this particular week, I decided to, on Saturday, make some ginger lime cod. And the reason for this is that I had a Good Chop box coming this week and it happened to have um, what they call sable fish in it. Now, I've never had this type of fish before. And so I did a little research online and it's also called black cod. And it's a little bit richer and um, a little bit fattier than I would say regular cod is. And it's really delicious. If you ever get the chance to try it, I would highly recommend it. And so I knew that I wanted to obviously use that up. And so I just looked online for recipes with black cod or sable fish and I found this one with a ginger lime marinade that's baked in the oven. And typically my whole family is pretty okay with fish, especially like mild fish. So I decided to make that and then for the noodles, I actually have um, like a bunch of packages in my freezer of noodles that I've ordered from this dumpling place <laughs> that I need to use up. And so I decided to use those because they are Asian inspired and I thought they would go really well with the ginger lime cod. I also decided I would make a salad with that because I had some dressing in the fridge that I wanted to use along with some lettuce. And so that was kind of a combination of like use up what you have in your fridge and freezer plus use what you have, you know, coming in for videos throughout the week. So that worked out well. I would say that Connor and I really liked the fish, Adam and Kira, not so much. So I probably will make it again sometime. I'll probably just try a different recipe. I also on that night made an apple crisp and the reason I did that is because as I was inventorying, inventorying, is that a word? <laughs> as I was taking inventory of my refrigerator, I noticed that I had about six or seven gala apples in my fridge that needed to get used up that had gotten forgotten, gotten forgotten. Could I speak tonight? No, probably not. Um, that had been forgotten in my, um, uh, produce drawers. So I decided I would make an apple crisp. Whenever I have apples, I always gravitate toward that because I mainly have all of the other ingredients on hand. It's just like oatmeal, butter, flour, brown sugar, you know, stuff like that. So I made that. And then I also have some cream left over from Thanksgiving that I need to get used up. It is still good. And so I decided, Hey, I could use the apples for the apple crisp. And then I could also make whipped cream and put it on top of the apple crisp apple crisp boom so that was that particular night now the next night i did go ahead and decide to make chicken and noodles the reason i did this is because i had to make some freezer meals for a different video i was working on and i thought oh chicken and noodles sounds good and that's also a freezer meal <laughs> and i have the reams uh, frozen noodles in my freezer, a bag of those that I wanted to get used up. So that kind of all came together really well. I also made mashed potatoes with that, which I had a probably like a three, three quarters of a bag of Yukon gold potatoes in my pantry. Um, and I wanted to make sure I used those before they started to sprout. And 
chicken and noodles always go well with mashed potatoes. Plus, bonus, I could use up some of the extra cream from Thanksgiving in the mashed potatoes. And then on the side, I decided to make uh, green beans because we had uh, green beans, canned green beans in the pantry, which that's my family's favorite type of green bean. Okay. Uh, the next night I decided to make pork tenderloin, which was another freezer meal that I had put together for a different video. And I decided uh, actually that I would make it in the sous vide, which is my favorite, favorite way to make pork tenderloin. Um, I actually am gonna do like a whole video on sous vide. I don't know really how popular it will be because it's not really like a super common way of cooking. Um, but I really like it. You guys have seen me use it a lot for different, you know, steaks and pork and chicken and stuff like that. And I just really think it does a great job at cooking proteins. Um, so I am going to do a video on that soon. But if you have ever made pork tenderloin in the oven and it comes out kind of tough and chewy, it is a game changer making it in the sous vide. So I went ahead and made that. And then with that, I just made some mac and cheese on the side. The good thing about pork tenderloin is that my kids aren't necessarily super enthused about eating like plain pork or pork chops like just on their own. However, if I have buns, they will eat a barbecue pork sandwich. So that's kind of another one of those things that is super easy to like customize to different members of your family. Obviously really easy to just slice up some pork, throw it on a warm bun with some barbecue sauce. Obviously they're happy with the mac and cheese, boom fairly quick dinner, done. Um, and then the next night I basically planned ahead because I knew I would have leftovers from the pork tenderloin. So there were two pork tenderloins in the bag and I knew that we weren't gonna eat all of those. I knew we were gonna have leftovers. One thing I like to do with pork, especially if it's a pork loin that I can slice after it's been chilled, is make Cuban sandwiches. So they're not like super authentic, obviously, because I don't really have the proper bread but it's basically thin sliced pork, ham, pickles, yellow mustard, and Swiss cheese. And I usually like press it um, in a skillet. So it's kind of like a, a panini, I guess you would say. They're really good. I love those sandwiches. So I did make those with some um, tater tots because I actually had like a bag and a half of tater tots in my freezer. And I'm like, what are these doing? <laughs> What are these doing in here? I need to use them up. Um, so I went ahead and cooked those. Um, and yeah, that was obviously a very simple dinner. Um, the following night, I actually made a uh, holiday themed meal that you guys will be seeing within the next couple of days. So I'm not going to share that or share that in this video, but it did again, use some things that I got from Good Chop. Um, actually one of the sides that I got from them, some au gratin potatoes, some steak, some scallops. Um, and then I made a really uh, cool dessert as well that I think you guys will be super interested in for uh, the holidays coming up. So that is kind of how I planned our meals this week. Tomorrow we're actually gonna be having quesadillas which I ended up prepping the chicken for the quesadillas this weekend when I filmed a freezer meal video. It's kind of like an instant pot shredded salsa verde chicken. And so we'll have that on tortillas with you know cheese. I'll make quesadillas out of those. Um, we'll probably have chips and salsa. And then I think I have some pinto beans in the pantry I can make uh, refried beans out of. So let's go ahead and jump into the quick grocery haul. All right. So here's everything that I got for this week's grocery haul from Walmart. I was able to get a couple pounds of strawberries. Um, these have actually been decent and I mean, they're not anything like summer strawberries, obviously, but they're good. Oh, hi. You think, cause I'm talking, you get a treat. All right, we got some bananas and then some green grapes. These are actually not great. <laughs> um, they're kind of mushy. So what I might do with these is, you guys have probably seen me do this before, but you wash them and toss them in a Ziploc bag with some sugar-free Jello powder and freeze them. And they're like frozen little sweet sugar-free grapes. My kids really like them. I got a bag of lemons. Um, I just needed a refill on some um, citrus and I have a few things I wanna use those for. Um, I did get some romaine lettuce as well. Uh, I just went ahead and got the kind that um, you have to wash because I, what I end up doing is I just keep it whole and unwashed in the fridge 
until I need it. And I find that it stays a lot better that way than if I kind of chop it all up at the beginning of the week, then it'll start to get brown on me. I got some more cilantro. I have a few recipes I'm gonna use that in. Some shredded carrots. I decided to get the organic ones this time because I've gotten the regular ones a couple times in a row and they've been kind of slimy and, and not great. So I decided to try those instead. Some green onions. Um, I did get some poblanos because I wanna make some roasted poblanos for corn salsa. Um, I wanted like three heads of broccoli, but they gave me one, so. <laughs> Womp womp, that's fine, we'll figure out something. Um, I got some celery. I had been buying the pre-washed celery, but I find that it goes bad really fast. So I think I'm just gonna go back to getting the regular celery and washing it myself. Um, I got some mini cucumbers, and then I also got just like a regular English cucumber because we were all out and there's a couple of th different things I wanna use it for. I got a, an avocado for if I want to make spring roll wraps. And then I got, why are these Slim Jims in the produce? Anyway, I got some Slim Jims for Connor and some more limes. Um, I also got some iceberg lettuce because I thought that sounded good for salad. And I think I might make burgers this week. Hi, hello. They've been out of the garlic paste that I like in like the refrigerated produce section. So I decided to try this great value minced garlic in olive oil. I don't think I've ever brought, bought this before, but we'll see. I had good reviews. I got some jalapenos for a couple different recipes and uh, one yellow onion and one red onion and then some cherry tomatoes just for salads and snacking and whatnot. Okay, so I got some half and half just for coffee because we we're all out of that. And then I grabbed a couple different kinds of cold brew. I'm gonna be home, working from home all week, so I definitely wanted a couple uh, bottles of this. Um, I got the Starbucks medium unsweetened black and then the Stoke unsweet black just to mix it up a little bit. Um, I also got some of this sugar-free hazelnut creamer. This is the Coffee Mate. I don't think I've tried that flavor before, so hopefully it's good. Um, I got some 0% Faye Greek yogurt for a recipe, some sour cream, and then some cottage cheese that I'm going to probably eat with... Um, my breakfast bowls so I think I'm going to meal prep like some hash brown and egg and turkey sausage meal prep meal prep breakfast bowls and I like to eat cottage cheese with that in the morning for some extra protein um, I got some Greek yogurt this is like well this is the light and fit Greek yogurt so I got one key lime and one um, strawberry cheesecake some cracker cuts this is the sharp yellow cheddar cheese um, some thin spaghetti I have some freezer, or I'm sorry, I have some marinara sauce, some meat sauce that's in the freezer. And so I thought if I needed a quick dinner this week, I could make spaghetti. So I got that. Some sharp cheddar cheese sticks and then some sausage gravy mix. I might make this with the breakfast bowls, I think. And then some pita breads. These are, I think the low, yeah, these are the low carb ones. So they only have 60 calories per pita, which is really good. And they're really good to make like little mini pizzas on, or you can also just use them for wraps or toast them up and eat them with hummus. They're super good if you've never tried them before. Um, I got some more eggs and then I needed a refill on rice. So I just got a big five pound bag just so we wouldn't run out. Um, a couple different kind of tortillas because I think I'm gonna make quesadillas this week for dinner one night. Um, I got the La Tortilla Factory uh, low carb tortillas and then the regular mission super soft uh, flour tortillas i can't remember if i bought this before but these are uh, the great value turkey sausage patties so i'm going to use these for some breakfast meal prep um, i got some mayonnaise because we we're running low on that some different types of keurig coffee because uh, we were running low so we tried this one i actually just brewed a cup of it for, for adam and i to try I don't know if you guys have tried these. It's the Donut Shop One Step Cappuccino. They also have One Step Latte. So it does have sugar and calories in it because it's got sugar and creamer in there. I don't, this tastes salty. Like, why would it be salty? I'm not quite, sh I'm not quite sure. Um, so we'll probably have to jazz it up a little bit to make it tolerable. I had heard good things about the One Step Latte, so I'm not sure if that one is different, but I thought that was odd. Um, and then we also got just some of the caramel uh, Starbucks pods. These, I would say, they don't really taste that much like caramel. I just really like the flavor of them, so I got those. 
some Capri Sun for the kids, some frozen edamame. I love having this for a snack with some soy sauce and salt. Um, I got some Cherry Coke Zero and then some bulgogi chicken dumplings. Um, Kira really likes these and sometimes we have them as a side for dinner if we're having some type of Asian dish. I grabbed some sourdough bread just for toast or sandwiches. Um, and then I also got some frozen hash browns for the breakfast bowls I'm gonna make. I forgot to mention, I got some regular bread also for regular sandwiches. And then I needed to refill on some meal prep containers because after Thanksgiving, I gave a bunch of them away, <laughs> which obviously is expected. Um, I really like these round ones for like salads. And like I said, I was gonna make, do that breakfast meal prep. So that's everything that I got from the store today. Just like we were talking about trying to save money at the grocery store and maximize what we have in our freezer and pantry and fridge and kind of, you know, rethink our meals throughout the week in terms of leftovers. In the same money saving vein, I have got a sweet deal for you guys on Scentbird and I'm super happy to tell you about it. Scentbird is actually sponsoring today's video. So thank you to them. You guys know I've worked with them before and I love their portable scents and I'm going to tell you why. Well, you guys know that I travel a lot for work anyway, so obviously they fit really well in my travel bag, but the thing that I find really challenging about buying fragrances is that number one, buying a bottle of fragrance is very expensive, many times over $100, sometimes $300 to $400 if you're buying something really high end. And also sometimes I find that when you buy a large bottle of fragrance, you kind of get tired of it after a while. Scentbird actually allows you to choose from hundreds of fragrances on their site that you can try in these little vials and it's just the right amount. You get to wear it for a while without getting tired of it and plus, they're super portable. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that allows you to try new designer fragrances each month for just $17. With each fragrance, like I said, you get a 30 day supply, which is just the right amount, I think, to try it and decide if you wanna buy a full bottle or not, or you can just stick with a subscription and keep getting your different fragrances every month, which is what I like doing. They also send these cards with the fragrances, which I really like. It has um, kind of the scent notes on the back and tells you about the fragrance in case you wanna purchase a whole bottle. This first one that I have here is Veronique Goodbye, and this one is Ready for Rosé. This one has notes of magnolia, rhubarb, and rose. The thing I also like about these is that if you throw them in your bag, it has like a lock and unlock function. So when it's locked, you can't press down on the plunger, but when it's unlocked, then obviously you can spray it on yourself. I really like that because then it doesn't spray all over inside your bag. I love this one. Another one that I got is Arabesque by Ormond Jane. Um, this one has notes of saffron, musk, and patchouli. It smells really good as well. And I think my favorite one that I got in this particular batch was the Michel Germain, the Sugarful Kiss. I know I just put another perfume on, but I really wanna spray this one so I can tell you what it smells like. This one is super like sweet smelling. Um, this one says it has notes of cherries, orange zest, peony, musk flower, and powdered sugar. I really like this one. If you like like sweet fruity perfumes, um, definitely try this one, Sugarful Kiss, love it. Honestly, I'm probably going to gift my daughter a subscription to Scentbird for Christmas because I always find that teen girls are super hard to buy for and she's always carrying around these big bottles of body spray in her bag. And so I think these would be perfect for her to uh, use at school and at practices and things like that. And if you're wondering if they have unisex options, yes, they do. They have just a huge variety of scents and I love that you can kind of search through the options they have by what scent you like, what vibe you like. You can also take a quiz to determine what the best scents are for you to help you pick your scents out. So if you guys wanna try out Scentbird, I highly, highly recommend them. You can click the link below or I'll also have a QR code on the screen right here that you can scan with your phone to go to Scentbird and use my code CHAPIN55, that's C-H-A, P-I-N-5-5, and that, my friends, is gonna give you 55% off your first month at Scentbird, which comes out to about $8. So it's definitely a no-brainer. I hope you guys try them out. Like I said, I just love having these little 30-day supply fragrances that 
I don't just use them when I travel, I use them at home as well because I'm a person that kind of likes to mix up my scents. So don't forget to click the link below or scan the QR code and get 55% off your first month of Scentbird. And thank you again to Scentbird for sponsoring this video and supporting me on my channel. So for dinner, I am gonna make this uh, sable fish, which is also called black cod from my Good Chop box. I have the fish basically just thawing out right now in some cool water. I just removed it from the larger package and put it into a bowl and I'm soaking it in cool water until it thaws. I'm gonna add to a bowl here to make the marinade, two cloves of garlic. Okay, and then we need about a teaspoon of lime zest. So I'm just gonna grate that over the bowl here. All right, and then I'm gonna squeeze four tablespoons of lime juice. Okay, I'm adding my lime juice to the bowl. And then we need about three tablespoons of honey, or you could use agave as well. Okay, and then two tablespoons of olive oil. All right, I'm gonna do one and a half teaspoons of salt. And then we need about a tablespoon of grated ginger. So again, I'm just gonna grate that right into the bowl. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit of miso paste, maybe like a little more than a teaspoon. All right, and then we'll just whisk this up. And this is what we'll use to marinate the fish. Okay, so our fish is thawed. I went ahead and put it in a bag. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pour the marinade in there. Okay, and then I'm just gonna lay this flat um, with the flesh side down in the fridge and let it marinate for um, probably about an hour and a half before dinner. All right, so these were the noodles I was telling you guys about. They are from a company called Mila that also makes really good dumplings. So I'll find their site and link them down below. But I really only had to marinate this fish for a couple of hours and it was super flavorful. So I'm just putting it skin side down on a foil lined baking sheet and I do that kind of so that the skin will naturally stick a little bit to the foil and it's easier to remove while you are um, serving it. So I'm just going to pop that in the oven and let that bake for about 15 minutes. And then I took the rest of the marinade and reduced it down so that I could glaze the fish with it. You just want to make sure that you boil it to obviously get any of the um, raw bacteria out of the marinade before you glaze your fish with it at the end. I also went ahead and cooked some dumplings because I had some of those in the freezer that I wanted to use up. I boiled three packages of these noodles um, and then these are super simple so basically you just boil the noodles they come with a seasoning pack and you stir everything together at the end super simple and these are really good quality noodles they also come with a little pack of veggies in there so like um, green onions and carrots um, their dumplings are also super good quality too, really good soup dumplings if you're into those. They are a little bit pricey, but it's kind of one of those things where I feel like you get what you pay for. Um, the sauce, like I said, comes right with the noodles, so you just mix that in after they are cooked and it mixes right together. Here's the fish after it was done baking. I did want to get kind of a little bit of color on it, so I'm just drizzling some of that glaze over the fish and then I stuck this back under the broiler for about four minutes on high. Um, I didn't want to overcook the fish obviously I just wanted to get a little bit of crust on the top and then this was some lettuce that I had in the fridge that I wanted to get used up and I had some uh, maple ginger dressing that I actually bought for another recipe. And so I figured I would cut up this romaine lettuce um, and use that along with the dressing. And then I wish I would have had some cucumber, but I didn't have any on hand. This was actually before I <laughs> ordered my groceries, but I did have some peppers. So I chopped those up. And then I always like to add a little bit of cilantro in like my Asian salads. So I chopped some of that up. And then I just threw everything into a bowl. So I'm going to make this like a big kind of tossed salad for everybody. Um, this is the maple ginger vinaigrette. I'm not a huge fan of this vinaigrette. I don't think I would purchase it again, 
but I did try to kind of jazz it up with a little bit of lime juice. And then I love these little wonton strips. I get them from Walmart. They are the perfect topping for salad. Um, and yeah, so I put some of those on the top. And so we had the noodles uh, with some of the dumplings on the side and the fish and then the salad. So this was a pretty good meal. Definitely uh, recommend this recipe. I'll link it down below. Okay, so I had some apples in my fridge that I wanted to use up. So we're going to make the apple crisp that I have in uh, my cookbook. It's on page 124. My cookbook is always linked down below. So what I've already done is I've taken six small apples and I have peeled them and cored them. And I basically just sliced them um, pretty thin. And I tried to make them all the same thickness obviously approximately so that they will cook uh, at the same rate in the oven. So for the apple crisp, you need some sweetener. Um, I'm gonna actually use half brown sugar, so like half regular brown sugar. And then I'm also going to use some brown monk fruit sweetener. I forget what a brand this is, probably Swerve. And this will just obviously cut down on the calories and the sugar a little bit. I'm gonna add a third of a cup of all-purpose flour. Okay, you can use honey if you want, but I'm gonna use maple syrup because I have some on hand. So about two tablespoons of that. And then the juice of one lemon. I'm gonna sprinkle just a little bit of cinnamon in there. And then just want to stir this up until everything is combined. So I've got a nine by nine baking dish here and I'm just gonna add my apples to that. I did spray this baking dish with a little bit of cooking spray. So for the top of the apple crisp, we're just gonna make an oatmeal crust. So I've got five tablespoons of all purpose flour in, I'm sorry, five tablespoons of butter that I softened. And we're gonna add a third of a cup of flour third of a cup of oats and then we're gonna add a third of a cup of the brown sugar substitute fourth of a teaspoon of ground cinnamon and then a quarter teaspoon of salt you can add uh, walnuts to this if you'd like okay and then this is a pastry cutter this is what I'm going to use to mix the crust ingredients together um, if you don't have this you can try to do it with a couple of forks but I do recommend this tool because it makes it super easy. So my crumble, I'm just gonna go ahead and sprinkle it evenly on top of the apples. Okay, so this apple crisp is done. I have my oven set at 375. I'm just gonna put this in here for probably about 35 minutes until it's cooked through and the top is golden. Okay, so again, trying to use up this cream from Thanksgiving that I apparently purchased way too much of. I'm just putting some of it into uh, a bowl with a few spoonfuls of powdered sugar. I really don't measure it. I also added a little bit of vanilla and I just whipped that up until it was nice and fluffy. And then uh, here is that apple crisp. So I just put some of that into the bowl along with the whipped cream. Super delicious. You could also serve this with vanilla ice cream. That's really good as well. Okay, so I am going to make some chicken and noodles. And this was actually a freezer meal that I had prepared. Uh, it's meant to go in the slow cooker. However, it's a little after four o'clock and I don't have time <laughs> to, to do that tonight. So I'm gonna show you kind of how uh, I'm, I'm modifying that here. So in here is basically just some seasonings, chicken bouillon, carrot, celery, and a big um, chicken breast. So let's go ahead and put that into the pot. And then I'm gonna add some water, probably about six to eight cups of water. Since I still have some of that bouillon and seasonings in there, I wanna make sure I get all of that out. And then I'm gonna be using the uh, Reams frozen egg noodles with this particular recipe. You can make this in the slow cooker with um, regular dried egg noodles as well, which is what the recipe originally calls for. I'm just using what I have. I have some fresh thyme on hand, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw that in. I'll go ahead and heat this up. And then 
basically I'm just gonna simmer this I'll bring it to a boil obviously but then we'll just simmer it kind of over a medium low heat until the chicken is tender you don't want to sim you know boil it too fast or the chicken it may end up tough okay so this came to a boil and I think I turned it down a little bit too much but I need to turn it to like medium low and then we'll simmer this for about 20 minutes so I finished cooking the chicken and basically what I did was I took it out and put it into a bowl and just covered it with foil until it's cool enough to handle and then um, I'll just show you you can basically see that it shreds really easily you just want to make sure that it's tender and not super tough because we want to shred it and then we're gonna add it back into the broth with the noodles which I need to go grab out of the freezer okay so I went ahead and brought my um, broth back up to a boil and I'm just gonna take out these thyme stems just to make sure that they don't get tangled up <laughs> with the noodles I almost forgot to do that okay this is a 24 ounce bag of Reams noodles and you can find these in different brands they're basically like really thick egg noodles we're gonna go ahead and add these to the pot now I may have to add a couple more cups of broth we'll see we kind it, it depends really whether you want this as a soup or more of kind of like a stewed chicken and noodle um, we like ours very thick so I may not have to add much more broth these do have to cook for let's see about 20 minutes they take obviously longer than regular noodles so it'll take a little bit obviously to come back up to heat as well since they're frozen so I'm just gonna put the lid on and we will cook them all right so I'm gonna make a few mashed potatoes I have some Yukon gold potatoes here I normally don't make mashed potatoes with these but that's what I have on hand so that's what we will use I'm just gonna put the potatoes in this bowl so I can rinse them off once I'm done peeling them all right I'm just gonna cube these potatoes up and put them in the pot and then I'll add some water and bring them to a boil okay so I filled up some water in here I'm gonna add some salt and bring this to a boil okay, so the noodles are almost done I'm just gonna go ahead and add my shredded chicken and stir that in and once the noodles finish cooking I'm just gonna turn this off and put a lid on it and let it sit for a little bit okay so the potatoes are done I'm just gonna go ahead and drain the water off of these okay we're gonna add some butter and then I'm gonna add some sour cream I have cream in the fridge I normally use milk but I need to use this up because I had it from Thanksgiving Okay, so let's taste. Okay, so I'm gonna put these on the back of the stove and keep them warm. Okay, so I totally failed at getting a picture of a completed plate, but we do have some left over. So here's a reminder that you can also meal prep leftovers. So this is just one that I packed with mashed potatoes and chicken and noodles and green beans and Adam will probably take this to work and warm it up for lunch one day this week. And then I packed these two containers of chicken and noodles into these two cup containers and then also some mashed potatoes. I love these containers. I get them on Amazon. I can link them down below. Um, they do go into the dishwasher, but then they're also inexpensive enough that if one cracks or you lose it or you know you leave it at work or something it's not like a huge huge deal so anyway that was good uh, I also had rolls which I don't think I filmed um, but those got eaten and I didn't have a chance to film them so yeah okay so this is a freezer meal that I had prepped it is um, two pork tenderloins in here I'm just gonna sous vide it right in this um, bag because I think it will work just the same so once you put it in there, it will kind of suck the water out or the, yeah, the air of the bag like that. And then I'll zip it up. Okay, so I put the pork in there and um, it's just clipped so that it doesn't sink into the water and you know, the bag doesn't accidentally open. So you want it, your meat like fully submerged. And then I set this to 150. Um, which is medium well for pork. 
All right, so we've got our mac and cheese going. I'm going to put a little bit of canola oil into a stainless steel skillet, and that's what I'm gonna to use to sear the pork. So even though we've cooked the pork in the sous vide, you do want to get some of that char or crust on the outside of it. That helps kind of seal everything in. Um, obviously mac and cheese is pretty self-explanatory, but the pork turned out so, so good. You can see that it's cooked perfectly like medium well. That's the other thing about using this sous vide is that it will cook exactly to the specified temperature and then hold it there. So this was my plate. I actually just had a little bit of mac and cheese with my pork and then I had some broccoli and tomatoes on the side. Okay, so this is not what I'm making for dinner, but I'm kind of gonna make it as an appetizer, I guess, because I thought out these scallops the other day and I haven't gotten the chance to cook them. And so I don't wanna put them back in the freezer. I wanna use them and I don't want them to go bad. So I have some scallops here. I just season these with salt, pepper, and garlic powder. And then I crisped up some bacon, but I left some of the pieces kind of floppy. So I'm gonna wrap, I'm gonna do bacon wrapped scallops, obviously. So I'm gonna wrap these in bacon and then sprinkle on, this is a little bit of brown sugar mixed with um, ginger. I'm trying this recipe from sweetseadesigns.com. Okay, so those scallops actually turned out really good. Um, I am gonna go ahead and make my Cuban sandwiches. So I'm just thin slicing some pickles and then thin slicing some of that pork loin. Um, these were good, but I would say I feel like the sandwiches needed a little bit more flavor. I don't know if I should have maybe added a little bit of salt and pepper to the pork before I added it to the sandwich um, or maybe a little bit more mustard or more pickles, but they were, I mean, they were still good. We obviously ate them, but if I made them again, I would try to add a little bit more flavor. So I just like to add a little bit of the thin pork on there and then um, obviously some pickles and then Swiss cheese um, and then some thin sliced ham as well. This is another thing. I just kind of happened to have everything on hand to make these, which is something I feel like hardly ever <laughs> happens, but I love it when it does. And then I just buttered the outside of the bread and I like to kind of push it down in the skillet with a pot lid to kind of press it like a panini and cut it in half. And we served this with some tater tots that I had in the freezer. All right, so thank you guys for coming along this week. Don't forget to check out Scent Bird. You can get your first month for a sweet deal. I think it's around $8 for your first month if you use my code. So check out that link down below. Um, and yeah, let me know if you want me to do more videos like this. Um, I know you guys like grocery hauls and I like filming grocery hauls, but sometimes depending on how much I buy, they're just like such a quick video that I'm like, I can't post that. It's only like five. <laughs> It's only like five minutes long. So um, I kind of think maybe, you know, having the, the meal plan along with the grocery haul with what I cooked out of the groceries um, might be a better choice, but you guys can let me know what you think. So thanks again for being here for another day of Vlogmas and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.